You believe that three strong competitors in this space is better than two really strong ones and one limping along, another just trying really hard. As this now goes to court, how long can the market afford to wait before this gets decided one way or another? Yeah, I think you have it exactly right. I think when you look at this transaction, whether it's our review at the FCC or, as you point out, uh, the pending litigation led by uh, Democrat state AGs, it tees up two fundamentally different approaches to technology. One, I think, is very backwards looking that operates to preserve the status quo. Uh, I think that fails the Gretzky test. When you look at where the hockey puck is today and where it's going on 5G, I think we should embrace this disruptive new competition, seeking to preserve what we have today, or as one of my dissenting colleagues at the FCC said, that we've already seen the golden age of wireless, I think has it backwards. Uh, that's like living in the era of 3G to 4G and trying to hold on to uh, flip phones and ringtones. I think we see so much disruptive competition coming, and approving this deal puts us on a clear path to getting there. Give us an update on where we stand, the U.S., when it comes to 5G. Um, are we in the competitive position that we need to be? What needs to happen over the next 12 to 18 months? 5G is a really good success story for the U.S. It's a great job story. Uh, it's a great story about economic opportunity. And the Trump administration and those of us at the FCC have been focused on positioning the U.S. to lead the world. We've leapfrogged global uh, competitors to take leadership here. And that's one lens that I view this transaction through. By approving this deal, we have a uh, commitment to build out 5G to 99% of the U.S. Uh, turning this deal away uh, would mean we don't get that accelerated 5G build out. For rural America in particular, that would be a huge loss. Uh, this is the fastest, clearest path to closing that digital divide, making sure every single community in the country gets 5G. Commissioner, though, I want to go back to the point that some of the your dissenting colleagues at the FCC have made and also the state AGs that are bringing this lawsuit forward. And they argue that this merger is going to hurt consumers, it's going to drive up prices, and it's going to stave off competition. And they've pointed to other mergers and in, in other industries as examples of that. What makes you so confident that that doesn't happen? I think this tees up that fundamentally different perspective. One of my colleagues, for instance, pointed to Sprint and said that Sprint had announced some 5G builds before this transaction. Well, if you scratch below the surface of those announcements, it's a limited 5G build in a handful of cities and no plan to go beyond that. Sprint right now has been a wash in debt. They've fallen from the number three to number four carrier. They've stabilized at number four because there isn't a fifth nationwide provider they can fall behind. So if you step back, a lot of these state litigations focused on 5G builds in big cities. Those are places that are gonna get 5G no matter what we do with the FCC or in this litigation. But if you look at rural America, what's your plan, what's your path to building out in those areas? This transaction gives the scope and scale necessary to do that. And frankly, as we started, to have a third strong competitor to Verizon AT&T that is going to unleash a new wave of competition that's going to benefit Americans. Finally, Commissioner, I'm sure you've seen uh, the chairman's tweet, uh, Jeet Pai, about uh, China, saying if, if this is how China is willing to use its leverage over basketball, mm. imagine what could happen if we let Chinese companies into the 5G infrastructure here. Would we be notably harmed if we didn't have the advantage of Chinese technology? I think it's a great point. You know, we have a proceeding at the FCC looking at whether to allow funding of Huawei equipment. And at my request, we're also looking closely at whether we need to take equipment out of the network. I think the chairman nailed it. Uh, there's a lot of people that say the laws in China don't expressly authorize them to use this Huawei equipment in the U.S. for spying or other nefarious purposes. There's been some disagreement about that, but this NBA uh, issue of the last couple of weeks shows how China can leverage uh, all sorts of different uh, levers to exert and have people tow its own uh, political line. So I think that is a threat that that same type of influence could be exerted through Chinese-owned equipment in the U.S. market, which is why we're taking a very close look at the FCC about whether to do something about that.